Welcome back, YouTubers. This is going to be part three of uh, uh, the uh, Safari Van Rescue. This is the Astro. We're going to get the Safari or go work on it. Now, uh, we got another two inches of rain. Um, I think uh, last night we got another two and a half inches of rain. Uh, so um, I'm going to be able to drive out on this guy's uh, driveway, but I'm going to have to hump all my stuff back there. Uh, I have it pulled back to his uh, barn where there's electricity uh, where this now I think about it better get this too uh, the, the the kind of electricity that this likes because it doesn't like my generator all right uh, we're gonna go out there and of course uh, the magic pixies are going to come and, uh, and and do this to you <laughs> okay they're going to throw a wrench in every kind of, every kind of, uh, in, in, you know, in every orifice. So we have to prepare ourselves like good Boy Scouts, okay? So even if you prepare yourself, you're still going to get the magic pixies. Uh, but you can, you can tolerate them and you can work around the magic pixies if you have enough uh, preparation. Preparation is key to everything. Um, so we have this battery that I'm going to use and the reason why I'm going to use this battery is because I know how it sits in the vehicle uh, you can't have the posts back here uh, it's it's one of General Motors fantastic design of uh, side post batteries uh, something no one ever asked for but they gave it to us anyways uh, so um, uh, the side posts are supposed to be here and here okay so the ground is over here close to the body and whatnot and the, and the positive is over here so at least we have a positive terminal here and negative terminal here uh, I could use this battery but it's it's completely uh, bass backwards uh, this is uh, a Japanese battery and uh, this one came out of a I think a German car or a Volvo something like that so a little different of course uh, the cats and jammer cars are all backwards uh, so anyways okay I have these right uh, this one I can probably run off the side and actually clear but if you uh, turn it to the front like this you can see it's it's going to be rubbing on here and what you're going to do is you're going to tighten this up and that, since this is made out of uh, uh, sugar and water it'll just strip okay so we we have to do it to the side and you have to be very careful with these terminals I know I know so I got another one I brought another one just in case uh, I have a friend of mine who goes out and strips cars for uh, wire out of the salvage yard uh, and he goes to the cats and jammer cars because those are the best ones because cats and jammer cars all have the uh, batteries in the trunk so they have these enormous long lines uh, going from the trunk uh, to the uh, to the starter motor, which is which which is it's it's wise, you know. Why wouldn't you want to run uh, you know thirty dollars worth of copper from the from your trunk all the way to the back when you could do it from the front? Yeah, yeah. It's, I'm telling you, Japanese is the way to go. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, uh, enough about that. Uh, I made myself a uh, a little deal here. What I did is I just took a couple of. Uh, uh, Eight by one two five nuts welded them on a uh, on a one two five stud. Put it in there, bolted it, uh, and I also put some extra nuts underneath there to make it make it even more stout. Uh, and then I have a stack of washers there for what trickery the uh, the magic pixies might send my way, uh, just in case. Got to be prepared, you know. Okay, so let's get everything on the van and uh, uh, next video we'll be out there. You've traveled out there already, so. I know where it's at. You know where it's at, so we don't need to video it. Uh, here's uh, our final final mirror. And uh, my, aren't you just a show dog? Look at that. That's a beauty right there. Okay, we're going to put it in the mag uh, in the plastic bag so the magic pixies can't scratch it. And uh, and uh, plastic plastic seals out any magic pixies. All right, let's let's load up the Astro and let's get going. All right, we're at the van, um, and uh, the uh, grinder ground just enough, and then it smoked. In fact, it got so hot, I had to dunk it in a bucket of water. So it's done, but it did serve our purpose. There is what I'm looking for. 
Now, let me explain something to you. My 95, and I believe it to be 95 and up, 95 to 2005, the fuel pump cut out is in this area because this is where I pulled up the carpet and I looked in my van and this is where I started cutting here and what I come uh, into is a bunch of bracing and stuff and I managed to get it pried up a little bit to see the gas tank which goes about about to here that there is no that there so listen carefully this is for a 94 and older 94 this is a 94 and older TBI throttle body injected model it is not for the multi-port the multi-port is a different uh, has a different location for the fuel tank so nowhere on the internet could I find uh, 94 and back I did find some photographs uh, on a uh, on a blog or on a uh, uh, Astro Safari page and the guy did the same thing I did as he cut back here and then he found out it was up here and I have those pictures on my phone just to just to so we're gonna have to do some welding back here or some fixing or whatever but, you know what are you gonna do uh, I am NOT dropping this tank because the pain in the ass uh, uh, amount it would be it's just ridiculously incredible yeah don't want to climb underneath it here's our here is our lines you have to be very careful uh, not to cut too deep because there's not a lot of room there about a quarter of an inch so don't cut too deep when you cut there now I'm going to give you the gospel on where this is at okay so if you've got a 94 fuel pump and you want to cut it out that's what I'm going to put in my uh, in my uh, information is 94 Astro GMC and back where the location is and I'll tell you where it's at okay there's the wheel well right okay and there's the uh, fuel tank door right there the little bump for it, okay it is directly directly in the center directly in the center of these two and it is exactly 21 nope 25 inches exactly the center is 25 from your carpet right there all bets off if you've got a, a van that doesn't have carpet in it I'd probably add you know three inches because this is going to go back about three inches to the actual wall of the van so if you have just a cargo van that doesn't have carpet and I would probably add three inches to that probably so I'd go 28 if you have a cargo van 25 if you have a carpeted van okay and it's directly in the center 94 and back there you go see now if I would have been able to look online and found that information and I couldn't because everybody has 95 and up 95 and up 95 and up and that's where I got the information for my other one and that's why I cut right there so lesson learned okay this is a different body style than the 95 it truly is and they have a different placement of the gas tank so yeah because they have a different fuel injection system there you go now you know and now I know let's get that out of there All right there's several ways you can tell if your fuel pump is turning or if it's bad and I want to show you how to do it now this is for a 94 and it's for a TBI model all bets off on the rest of them okay this has a key switch and when you turn the key switch on two seconds it will give power to the gray wire back here see that gray wire the gray wire is a power wire the black wire is the ground those other two the purple one and the other one next to it those are your fuel tank excuse me fuel gauge um, where was I going with this okay five seconds no two seconds it'll it'll so if you put a meter on that and you turn the key on for two seconds it'll give you 12 volts and then it'll go down to nothing all right also if you crank the engine and you bring it up to power uh, the oil oil pressure up to up to snuff I should say up to power <laughs> the oil pressure up to up to you know what I'm talking about 
and it's got oil pressure. It has a switch here that turns the fuel pump on. Okay, so if you crank it, uh, oil pressure will come on, and then it'll supply 12 volts to back there to the gray wire. Okay, all right. Now, also another way is you can take a jumper, and there's a gray wire on this. These are your fuel pump relays, okay? Or one of them is, whatever. Uh, this one is, I think, your fuel pump relay. There's a gray wire that's taped to this, and if you take a jumper and you run it directly to 12 volt battery, okay, that gives you power directly to the fuel pump. Okay, so if I come back here, Let's see here, let's ground this. And cut the ground to that. Let's see if we can get a ground there. Sort of. We can get it to capitulate. And we hit the we get 12 volts. Okay. So uh, if you're not getting 12 volts to this gray wire it's might be it's not your fuel pump but I can tell you this you can put 12 volts through that wire next to the relay and it'll put 12 volts right to your fuel pump okay so if your relay fails you can always rig a jumper to get you home so there uh, when I connect these two wires together also when you when you hook to that jumper you're going to get an arc not a big arc but a little arc and if you get an arc you should hear your fuel pump run even if you don't hear the fuel pump run you'll have an arc because it's there's a load there so but the fuel pump isn't turning on this one I can plainly tell you know you can't hear it so uh, let's take that out uh, General Motors has got this wire pinched up in there I believe uh, I might have to cut that wiring harness and solder it if I can't get it out. I'll have to look up underneath it and see exactly how they got it. But if it's if it's up in there where I can't, I'm just gonna so I'm just gonna solder those wires and heat shrink them. So yeah, okay, let's get that out of there. So we know it's the pump now because we have power to it and it's not spinning, and we do have a small arc, uh, so we know we've got power going to the fuel pump. But it's not spinning but there is a load there so and <laughs> and that tank is a load also <laughs> incidentally before i start pulling that out uh this of course is the wrong battery it doesn't fit the tray uh, but it's going to be it's it'll serve its purpose for right now until i get the correct battery and i didn't have to cut my cables so when i buy the correct battery of course i'll, I'll buy side posts uh, this one being the ground isn't going to matter if it rubs because it's ground is ground so let's you know, take that off there don't want that on there okay let's get that fuel pump out okay i did cut the wires on that uh, i'm going to spray this with some lube to help take that ring off there's a ring right there you have to drive the ring off with a screwdriver and a hammer you're supposed to use something brass and that way it doesn't make sparks okay but because my gas tank is not full of gas it's full of uh well i don't know i put gas in it some gas so uh i'm gonna wear some gloves so if it explodes at least my hands will be able to be buried and i have a direct line to get out and nothing behind me so I can just be blown backwards so yeah anyways all right I'm, I'm not gonna film this I'm just gonna take it out um, I'm using a siphon hose to dump out that gas um, there's uh, quite a bit in there um, so we'll have a look at that I'm glad I mixed it with some old boat gas I had and shook it up uh, because it would probably be particularly stinky and uh, terrible. But it's really, it's not, it's terrible, but it's not like, <laughs> it's not like, yeah, it used, it acted as a solvent kind of and it helped to uh, 
uh, kind of uh, clean that out a little bit, shaking it up and stuff. So let's get that out and get that dumped. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to climb under the other side and see where that wiring harness goes. That's a good idea. Pull that uh, off there. All those flies are biting flies. So I've got myself soaked with uh, cutters. Let's see what you got here. Well, well. They're all on my legs too now. But they won't be biting not with that cutters on there. Let's see. Well, there's the harness. There's it going. I think that's going to be too much of a pain in the ass. Yes, sir. I got a new fuel filter, too. But I'm just going to run it without it for right now. Uh, yeah, a different transmission than mine does. Huh. I wonder if that's an old 350. Probably is. Probably before they come out with that S10 transmission or the, the old style. The old style is uh, the... Uh, Turbo Hydromatic. Tried and true. Been around for a million years. Wonder if my universal joints have got grease zerks in them. The other one doesn't. Yeah, that looks, uh, that looks too lucky to me. There's where she plugs in at. Right there, it looks like. But I think I'm just gonna splice. Why go through all that trouble? Oh, there's trouble too. Rear AC, wow. Rear heat, rear AC. More trouble. Alright. Okay. Even if the pump would have run, it would have delivered no fuel. Because these are just rotten. They're just... They're just mush. They just, you know, the... the yeah. No fuel. So uh, let's have a look at our let's have a look at our lines. Uh, this is our return line, the smaller one. The bigger one next to it is our fuel pump delivery line. The great big giant one is the vent, and the little one is a vent of sorts also. Um, the black and white and the purple is for the uh, uh, fuel sending unit and the uh, gray is the power of the black is the gray is the power of the black is the ground for the fuel pump okay so I got me some paper towels and I stuck down there that tarry substance right there that's what's left of those pieces of uh, pieces of um, oh um, hose that were on that old uh, fuel pump I think they have deteriorated and they ended up being a big old slimy mess down there uh, so what I'm doing is kind of mucking that all out with some paper towels and uh, cleaning it up the best I can and uh, the fuel filter will catch the rest going to be better than what it was, that's for sure. So. Okay. Um, here's our pump. It's going to go in there this way because, of course, the are going to line up with the hose. Um, yeah, I cut the wiring harness off. Why would you do that for? I just gonna solder it on there we're gonna check our o-ring to see if that works uh, this ring come off of there quite easily on the other one but the o-ring uh, is, is just turned to mush so yeah um, I'm going to grease my parts before I put them on there with a little uh, lithium and uh, so yeah uh, yeah yeah I can do that 
that'll work um, I'm, I can't work with I don't have a tripod so I can't work with only one hand so let's get this in there the best I could do is I uh, soldered and heat shrunk one the other ones had to get wrapped with tape because I didn't have any larger heat shrink than I did so I'll have to bring some heat shrink out next time and solder those proper but for right now that'll be fine Before you go and start your engine or try to run this pump make sure to put gas in the tank because that's what lubricates the pump you have to have gas don't forget that or your pump will spin and burn itself up got our battery in and our gas in battery connected our gas in our gas yeah five but five, five gallons of gas uh, let's turn the key and we have that line loose see what happens well, I heard the fuel pump. Let's do it one more time. Okay, I heard the fuel pump, so let's, and I heard this kind of hiss, so let's uh, tighten this up and see what happens. What say? Let's, uh, let's see what happens there. It's kind of too big of a wrench. Let's uh, give it a crank and see what happens here. I'm guessing our injector's plugged all up, probably. loose I've cracked this loose and I'm, I'm not getting anything to to it there's no fuel going to that to that uh, so the next thing I'm going to catch is my fuel filter so let's climb under the van and change the fuel filter I don't know if you want to come with me I might just do this by myself okay uh, I am getting fuel up to here uh, it, when I loosened it, the, the line was stuck in there so tight, I pulled it back and, line, and, and it squirted out of there. Sometimes your injectors get stuck. So let's see what happens here. Let's see if we can. Because I'm not seeing any spray coming out of them. 
Oh, I am now. I am now. I am now. <laughs> there she is. Okay. There she is. Spraying. Alright, let's check our vitals. Now that the engine's running. Not a lot of noise. A uh, little less than a quarter of a tank, eighth of a tank. Uh, we're charging and uh, we have oil pressure. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right, uh, I'm going to put it back together. Um, these plug wires look very, they're chewed all up too. Well, we'll see, that might get me home. Oh, okay, let's put this back together. So. Our injectors were stuck, knocked on the side of them, and they uh, and they, they they came online. So <laughs> there you go. That's good. That's good. All right, uh, I'm going to put this together, and uh, we'll see if it moves. Well, it moves, and uh, what I'm doing right now is uh, bleeding the brakes. Um, uh, you know, it, it moves. That's great. Well, it's got to stop too. You know. So uh, while I'm here, I'm changing the mud out of the brakes, and uh, that's what I had in there. I kind of sucked it all out and uh, uh, bled my back brakes. I'm going to use my spare for my van on there, and uh, uh, I've got another wheel I can get for the front here because the front is... i, I got to get another tire for that wheel because uh, this front wheel is cheesed up before I can drive it home I have to have four reasonable tires on it uh, so I'm gonna finish bleeding my brakes pull my spare out uh, uh, lock it up and then see if I can't find not lock it up but you know roll the windows up and such see if I can't find another tire to get on there uh, maybe he has one and I can uh, I can swap it out and put that on there drive it home but uh, it runs and drives, folks. 70 bucks. Well, wait a minute. What did I spend on the... Uh, the fuel pump. The fuel pump. Three filters and an air filter for this. I bought three. Or no, four, four oil filters. Uh, and a fuel filter. Because I've got two of these. You know, you buy them. So, you know, they're like a buck and a half a piece, so why not? Uh, so, four oil filters, the air filter for this, a fuel pump for it, uh, and a fuel filter for it uh, was $89 through Rock Auto. So, 90 so far I have uh, $70 for the van. I traded them for a windshield, the windshield molding and the glue. And I did the labor, 70 bucks for the van, $90 for parts. So far I have a, uh, uh, $160 in this. Not too bad, huh? All right. I'll get this posted and uh, you folks have a wonderful Memorial Day. See ya. Bye. Uh, I should say... Um, you know, you can say Merry Christmas and Happy Easter and Happy Labor Day and Happy Memorial Day. Uh, but just saying those words. Uh, remember all uh, the great things you have in this country. Uh, your freedom of speech. Uh, your freedom to say anything on the news uh, derogatory about the president. Uh, whether he be a Democrat or Republican. Uh, or whatever. Uh, your freedom of speech, your uh, Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. All these 
uh, freedom of religion, uh, all these uh, constitutional rights we have, uh, that piece of paper uh, is protected by uh, our, well, by our citizens, yeah, but it's also protected from, uh, you know, kings and potentates and, and dictators uh, by our U.S. military. Uh, kudos to our U.S. military and to those who have served. Uh, thank you, my brother, Brian, for your service uh, to our country. Um, and memorialize those uh, heroes that didn't make it home. So, there you go. That's what Memorial Day is about, memorializing the heroes. Don't ever forget that. And uh, don't forget they're the reason why you have uh, what you have. All right, have a good one, folks. See you later.